Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 46 of my Iron Man Age of Ultron inspired Hulkbuster cosplay. Last time I worked on making the helmet and faceplate open, which worked pretty well. I did some 3D printed gears and we looked at controlling that motor position with an Arduino. This time I've decided that we're going to continue working on the back of the suit because uh, basically it's quite neglected and the back of the suit doesn't really exist, it's totally open. I have a few other bits of mechanics I want to rebuild, I need to take another look at these opening shoulder pods because the mechanics in there aren't very good and we still need to look at the opening weapons pods in the arm but I'd actually quite like to get some panels made. So you may remember in the past I actually already built a mechanical assembly for the back and obviously it needs to open so that you can climb in and out um, so I built this which uh, was a 3D printed frame and these are sort of sprung and they also flip outwards so they can come away from the suit a bit like butterfly wings um, or whatever they are, ladybird wings. So um, this is actually quite heavy though and I don't really want this much weight on the suit having tried to walk in it. So uh, what we're going to do is probably design something else but let's have a look around the back. Here we are around the back of the suit. Uh, these clamps need to go and I need to screw the helmet on properly or make another bracket because the screw holes don't quite align. We've got the electronics here which was for opening and closing the mechanism. So I need to tidy that wiring up. Uh, the electronics won't be here. I need to build a proper control system so that can just be unscrewed and moved. But uh, here's the existing back panel which would be sort of there. But I don't think it's gonna fit anymore due to the hooks and bungees and all these things anyway. Um, so I'm going to look at a different mechanism for opening the back of the suit. So what I've already printed is this thing, which has got two hubs, and each one's got two holes in, and these are going to mount either side, and then the suit will open like cupboard doors, essentially. Now I've got two, um, two holes in here to put two pivots in, each top and bottom, and that's so I can make a four bar link. So uh, basically what will happen is the door will always stay parallel as it opens, using two um, sort of linkages on each side. Um, I want to keep this probably manually opening and closing so I can open it manually and climb in and pull it shut with some sort of cord. And that's basically so I can get out without relying on electronics if I have to. It could be motorized, but I probably think from a safety point of view, I don't want to be trapped in it, especially if it's the batteries that have caught fire. So um, I need to make some more mountings and work out exactly how far apart these are. Of course, I still need to get in. So it needs to be wider than my shoulders ideally. And I can mount that at the top, but also probably back to the bottom of the suit to mount it onto the wooden frame so it's nice and sturdy and doesn't wobble around. Here's one of the other pieces. So the sort of brown and red pieces are the pieces I just showed you. And the blue piece goes right at the top to hold that onto the piece of wood along the top of the suit. And of course I've got two of those there for the two opposites. At the bottom I've got various brackets, let's just turn off the ground plane, so the piece on the left here, the two bottom pieces hold the bottom of that, and also they offset slightly to one side so it can be screwed onto the wood. So I've got quite a lot of printing there to do for both sides and then hopefully we can mount those hinges up. I've got some of the parts mounted, so that's uh, one of those triangular looking pieces. Those are the two parts I started with. Then down the bottom here, I've got these pieces. So this one is going to go in here, and then this hopefully fits perfectly there and attaches there. So that gives me this big rail all the way down the back. What I've done with these parts is put screw holes in all the way so that these can be perfectly aligned together. So that goes on there. And then I'm going to solvent weld them as well with acetone, which works pretty well. And that's how I've put the whole structure of all the 3D printed parts together before. Here are both sides assembled, so they're big chunks of plastic. You can see there's a lot of printing gone into that. So we'll get those screwed on and then we'll get these pieces basically roughly fitted. And then we'll sort out the four bar links for the doors. I fitted those in the back. Each one is screwed on with two screws here. 
and also two screws down here so that makes the whole thing and I need to decide where these go which are adjustable for angle now so these can be moved around to get the angle between the two before I solvent weld those in so we can get this right for the four bar link. So these 3D prints are pretty sturdy actually. I can grab the whole suit and move it around by these and they're pretty strong. If I'd thought it through I would have built the whole torso frame out of 3D prints locked together like that instead of what this is which is actually wood painted silver. But there we go, live and learn. It does mean I can do some other big structures from 3D prints which is quite exciting. So I've printed these parts out which are going to be the hinges, so these will go to one hole on my hubs here and on the other one will go another one which will be offset, so I think I need to have these hubs at 45 degrees here so that these get offset and then I've got these triangular pieces which go like so and that means that these pieces should move out and stay parallel as they go. So I just need to make something to hold a pair of these together on each side and hopefully I can put some studding in and we can show how this is supposed to work. These white parts now slot into these black parts which holds them at the corners quite a good fit so that fits like so and that means that my holes are at 45 degrees and that gives me a flat to fit the back doors on and I've actually um, left some pilot screw holes in these so that I can screw the back of the frame on which will be for the entire back of the suit. So I'm going to get these solvent welded up, get my hub solvent welded into the other pieces on the back and then we'll drop some studding in. I've got one installed there with a bit of short studding in the top and bottom. Uh, this is fairly tight but I don't want it swinging around in the breeze anyway. So what I'm doing is using a washer on the bottom, a piece of studding fitted in here which is about 50mm uh, long with a lock nut on the top purely because I don't have any shorter 8mm bolts so I'm just cutting this out of studding and then that's going to fit in there and then the top one will just screw down. I can screw these through the plastic with my hands, they're not that tight but also you know they're not loose in the holes so I can get that all the way through. Might need a tool. There we go, so that makes my parallel doors and as you can see the two holes here should hopefully stay parallel and those will go on my 45 degree pieces that I've made. Right, I'm all screwed in so now my doors will both open and obviously these black things will stay parallel. They'll open up quite wide so that I can get in and out and then they'll come in and I'm not sure where, I need to put an end stop but I don't want them to be Probably here I want them to stick out slightly so I get that curved back but I do need to build a frame for the rest that goes around the back of the suit. I've got a couple of pieces here which I'm going to stick on here just with one screw to see if that's the right sort of contour for the back. And I've also got another piece which is a rather uninteresting block with two holes in, so I can get rid of these clamps, solve and weld that on, and properly screw the helmet down. So in profile, I think that's pretty good. Hopefully that is going to match up to the back of the helmet. There's going to be a panel that covers the back here, so it covers these sticks, and it kind of comes up high behind the helmet, so hopefully that's the right contour. So I think that's good enough as well for being able to open like so and obviously that allows me to get right inside. So that part works and what I need to do is build the rest of the frame of course which will come over each side and that will remain parallel as these open and then shut up to some angle which I think is about there 
to cover the back of the suit and of course this will hold all the details with the blasters or whatever they are on the back. I'm pretty happy with the way that's worked out, pretty happy with that mechanically and I think that's going to suit the contour of the back of the suit quite well and be quite practical for getting in and out. As you can appreciate there's been a lot of printing to get this entire structure made. I think it's about 40 or 50 hours of printing time to make those parts. So I'm afraid there's no more time this week to make any more of this but next time I'm going to be making the actual panels and painting them up and putting them on and hopefully the back of this is going to look a bit more complete. Then after that I'm going to work my way down the back of the legs so we're getting somewhere towards getting this finished. But don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and my other projects including my Star Wars projects and check out the social media links in the descriptions of this video.